pause for a moment to give a little introduction. All right, so this is going to be the final. The final is going to be using, um, oh wait, I have to share my screen. I'm sharing my screen with the recording, but I'm not sharing it with, oh no, I'm still sharing it. Never mind, I lied. Okay, so um, the final is going to be using a program called Pixlr, a website called Pixlr. Pixlr, so basically open a new tab, go to Pixlr. I've already, I mean, I've typed it in a bunch of times, so it's already there. Pixlr.com brings you to this photo editor. Um, there, like the, the vector program we used is sort of like uh, Adobe Illustrator, uh, a, a smaller version of Adobe Illustrator online, so, and it's free, so that's kind of cool. Um, Pixlr is a photo editor that has some of the same tools as uh, Adobe Photoshop. That's also cool. Um, there are other programs online that you can do that you can use that will, or programs you can download that you can use to emulate is it to do the same things that that Illustrator and Photoshop do. Like Illustrator is is Inkscape, and is Inkscape is the program that does vector graphics. And GIMP is is a very uh, um, a very well established photo editing program that's free, and um, these two are websites, and some of them are ad based, but that's all right. We get to use free editing software. So, you know, open up uh, Pixlr and go to Pixlr E because that's what I've been using and how to show how to show the the program. Um, you can see all the, the sample I've, samples I've done already. We're going to create new. When you click, click create new, it brings you to this page. Um, the output, because everything we do is, is on screens and most the, and the HD standard for screens is 1920 by 1080. So 1920 across, but 1080 tall. They have a preset. There's all these different presets. Like my screen is this, but not everybody has an HD screen. So we go to full HD, and that's that's going to get you good quality that will work for most internet stuff. If you're doing stuff online, HD quality, 1920 by 1080 is fine. So I click on that for my for my, and it'll put. And you see it, it changes the height and width of my workspace over here. Um, and then I'm going to put in a name, and let's call this final sample sample P. Six, and so I've now I've got a, a, a name for my project, and you're going to name your own project with like your name and period six or whatever, and then you click create, and it takes us to the workspace. Now, if you haven't done so already, I strongly suggest getting a wired mouse for you for doing graphics. And I, I mentioned this earlier in the semester, and I'm I'm going to say it again: a wired mouse is between six and ten bucks. A cheap one, and it's going to be give you better resolution than your finger on the touchpad. You know, touch screen kind of works, but but it's going to be easier to use the a mouse than it is to use a touchpad. All right, so we're in our workspace, and we see, and and you can see there's this checkerboard background. That's the the called the um, artboard or the workspace, and I can zoom in and out of it. And I'm I'm using the scroll wheel on my mouse. You can use the keyboard Control Plus and Minus. We'll zoom you in and out. If you wanted to zoom into a certain part of the project, and Control Zero will zoom you out to the full size. That it'll zoom it up to the largest it can be on the workspace. So you can see the whole workspace, and it fills the fills the screen. All right. So this is my starting point, and I'm going. To, and part of the project is you want a background because what this checkerboard means is, if I draw, I'm clicking on the the shape tool. Now the shape now some of the conventions for these editing programs, you notice that Vector had a bunch of tools on the left and there were controls and Photoshop and Illustrator, they all have the same same kind of basic design controls. So if you draw something, I'm going to draw this box here and the difference between Vector and Pixlr is if you draw a box on Vector, Vector then the tool unselects and then you'd have to click it again to draw another box. In this program, you can draw as many boxes as you want, and the tool is still turned on until you click on a different tool. And so I don't want these boxes. But what I want to show you is that once this box is drawn, if I save this file, I'll have a 1920 by 1080 sized image. But these checkerboards means it's translucent, that there's nothing there. All you would see in this big image 
is this one little box and the image would fill up the space of a 1920 by 1080 picture, but only this one little bit would be filled in. So rather than do that, I want to have a full size background. So I'm gonna go up here to my, and, and if you mouse over the tool, the name of the tool appears. Like here's the arrange tool, here's the marquee select, um, there's the pen tool, uh, there's all these different tools, you know, the zoom tool, but the nice thing about these programs is as you mouse over, as the mouse goes over the thing, it tells you what it is. You know, so that, that's kind of cool. So I want the arrange tool or the select tool in some programs. And it, now I've got the, now I've got these, these boxes again, these, these control shape, these, these shapes. And it changed what you see. So here you see the types of shape tools. When you click on the arrange tool, it gives you the, you know, here's the, the position settings here's the size settings right now it says fixed i want free because i want a certain size background now when you do this you're going to be drawing the the box now you can draw the box I'm, i've clicked on the the shape tool and if you draw starting bigger than whoops where is it it's going yes so i'm going to draw it's not going oh i need to add a layer so i'm going to go here to history i'm going to add a layer I'm going to add an empty layer, and so oddly, it didn't work out that way the first time, but now I've got the shape tool. I'm going to draw my shape bigger than the background, and it's a little bit off, so I'm going to go and change its... Normally, you would draw bigger than the background. It just fills the entire background, but what I'm going to do now is it's 1920 by 1075. Let's make it 1920 by 1080. So now my black background fills the entire space. I've got this weird outline. I don't want that. That's odd. So let's make this. What if we make this bigger? I think I want to try again with this drawing because Normally you don't get this weirdly, you don't get that. Well, something is odd. There we go. Now I can draw. Now I started beyond the the um, background and I'm drawing to outside the background, outside my workspace. And now my, whoops, did it again. I'll try again. So I started outside the t the um, workspace, and I'm going to draw down till it's outside the workspace, so that my the border of my box is outside my shape. And then if I click on the arrange tool, now it's 1920 by 1080. So my my first layer is 1920 by 1080, and it's filling my whole space. It's now I've, uh, you can choose a different color. I'm choosing black for now, and now I want to start adding images. Um, when you're adding images, you're going to add another layer. So layers are kind of like if you had a clear rectangle of plastic that you could see through um, and you drew a picture on it and then you drew another picture on another layer of plastic. It's like layers in a cake or layers, um, it, uh, you know, laying on two pages and two pages on top of each other that you can see through. So now I'm going to add another layer and I'm going to add an image layer. And when I do that, it's going to ask me to place an image. So I've got some, it, I've, I'm already in the folder where my images are because I've done this a number of times. The first time you find it, go to select image, you might have to, you have, might have to navigate around your computer to find where your images are saved. Um, if you're on a Chromebook, it's going to be in the downloads folder. If you're on a um, Mac or a PC, you'll have to figure out where you're, you're going to save your pictures and go to that folder because you need to save your pictures ahead of time. I've saved my pictures ahead of time. Here they are. And I'm going to go to my first image and open it. Now this image is a bit big for my, my layout, so I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. The aspect is fixed, so if I change one of these numbers, the other one will change proportionally, and that's what I want. So 400, that looks about right. So I've got my first, my first image placed into my design. Then I'm just going to keep on placing images by clicking on the Add Layer tool. Click on Image and pick another image 
from Sagrada Familia. And I'm going to change the size of this one as well. And if I so notice I, if I click once, my cursor is in the little box. If I double click, it highlights the whole number. So I can just type in the whole number, type in the number and it'll replace the, the number that was in there. So here's my second picture. Okay, I'm going to pick another photo by clicking on history, I click on um, uh, layer image, and I'll pick one of these glass ones. I wonder if I can do this. Yes, okay, so that's kind of cool. That'll save some time. If you control click, you hold the, so what I did is I imported two at, this, two at once and it, and it did it for me and it created the layers. That's cool. So now I'm gonna, now the, if you, maybe you didn't notice, but I'm going to, this, this time it's the width. I want to make the width the same as the, um, the long dimension is going to be the same, 400. And so I'm going to click on this other photo and make the width also 400. But you might, you might or might not have noticed that the height of this one is 267 and the height and the width of this one is 299. So the ratios are slightly different. These images were taken on with different cameras. So the the outside the ratio of height to width is slightly different that's okay okay now i'm going to add my last photo because the assignment is for five when you're doing a layout odd numbers work or look a little better than even numbers so um in this case the assignment is for five images um where's my valencia science center I'll put that one in and then now what might happen is if you now I, I saved these as smaller versions of these pictures to make the to be faster with because this is all uploading and downloading and there's internet involved and to make it faster um i um made the pictures a little smaller i saved the pictures in a smaller format you can use pixlr to do that but um and it's just and it will still work but when you upload a po photo that's bigger than 1920 by 1080 it might fill the whole screen so it might look like let's see it might look like this like when you upload your picture it might it might have it might be filling the whole screen that's just way too big so you can with it fixed you can go change the proportions whoops i want 400. And notice it's it's off the the screen uh, off the the workspace, so I'm just going to move it back down into the workspace. So I've got my four pic my five pictures ready to arrange, and the arranging of the photos it, or um, and we'll we'll get into uh, if you do it put it put, put in one of your vector drawings, um, the arrangement of these photos is kind of like the the design element we're working with. For the for this final project, um, you have your rule of thirds photo, and you can either use one of your vector photos. You can use screenshots of your Excel Excel um, work, but you're going to have five images that you created somehow. So you could have your uh, and, and for for it says two of your own. I'm going to say five. All the all the images you put in should be your own that you created during the time of this um, semester. They can be photos you took for fun, um, but there should be, you know, they should have sort of a rule of rules of third, um, clear composition, not just snapshots, um, but photos that that you took or images that you created during the time of this class. Not, it would be nice if it was for this class, but during the time of this class. All right. So when I'm placing these photos, photos have a direction. Like this photo right here of the um, the sculpture on the in the cathedral, it's got a direction. This guy is looking to the left, so I would not really want to place this photo on the left side of my composition, of the left side of my design, because the the way the eye travels around this image, all the lines are pointing out of the frame. So if my design is like this, and the look the person is looking around, and they get to this one, the eye just kind of travels out of the frame. You want to keep the viewer's interest and attention inside the frame. So this picture, I think this is going to go on the right side over here. And let's move these over for now. So now I've got these two pictures. Now this picture of the cross, 
the the back side of the cross faces the building so it's not really facing so it seems like the cross is facing out towards the city so it's a left facing picture that should also be on the right so i could put them like this okay that might work but looking at this photo down here it looks like there's this long this strong diagonal lines kind of pointing off the frame so i think i'm going to switch these and there's a kind of on this one there's kind of like a base and a backside sort of a frame on the bottom of this that's sort of on the right side and the bottom so this seems like it would go better Let's see, there's the middle of the frame. So let's go down here. Let's go, let's say, put it right here. And we'll put this one. That works. Um, we'll put this one on top of that one. And I want to have the pictures lined up top and bottom and left and right. So let's see, this one, 100. At 525. Okay, so looking at the left top position, left means how many pixels this picture is from the left border, and top means how many pixels from the top border. And I'm going to say, let's put this at 420, 1420. So then I can put this one at exactly the same position. It's at, well, it's at 1420 already, so that works out. So I've got this picture at 1420 and this picture at 1420. The top to bottom, this picture is at 100 and this picture is at 525. That means 100 plus 400 is 525. That means there's 25 pixels between the two pictures. All right, so I've got my first two pictures placed and they're lined up and everything. Now I'm gonna look at this. Okay, I want to put these, I think these, would, these two would go in, um, to the design, I, I think I can put them in, but I'm looking at these two pictures of the, the glass. These are actually windows, and you know, the glass, kind of like a, um, a stained glass window at Parc Gruel, also in Barcelona. This is in Barcelona, this is in Barcelona, or Barcelona as the locals say it. All right, so this design kind of has, a, has an upward line, the strong lines upward. This one kind of has a strong design on the, like on the top with lines going downward. So I think maybe these should go this way. I think they look better this way. So I'm going to slide this over until it looks like it's about 25 pixels away from that picture and this one. So it's lined up with this one. Now, one thing you can do is I can zoom in and see if I'm pretty close. Now, the, the tops of these pictures can be easily aligned by clicking on here. So this one says top 525. Top 525, so I hit it right on the money. It's exactly in the right place. This one says top 100. This is, so 100 I have to add to get this line down here to be perfectly in line with the bottom of this, I have to do some math. So this is the width, the, or the, the height is 267. Um, minus 400 is, or minus 500 is, 233. So top is 233. That's, oh, so then I add, eh, too much math. I'll just go in and I'm just gonna zoom in. Don't wanna do that much math in my head today. So I can zoom in and there I am. I'm zoomed in pretty far and I can see, I can just click on this. I can use the arrow key and move it over one. That looks right there, looks about right. So, and zoom, you can either use the zoom tool. I use the scroll key. You can use control plus and minus. Now, let's say I, let's say I ended up zooming in and I was over here. You can use these, these um, drag bars at the bottom or I can hold the space bar and my, my cursor turns into a hand and then I can click and drag and just move this over. So now I'm in the right place. This all looks good. Let me click outside here. That's kind of hard to see. I think one more pixel, like right there. That looks like it's all lined up. All right, so now control zero to zoom back out. And those two pictures are placed. So now my, my design is kind of like flowing down here and around here and kind of like the eye has boundaries to hold it in as it moves around the scene. So now this last one, I think I'm gonna put down here on the bottom. So the top of this picture over here, um, 
the 525 position should be the same here and here. Oops, it's not. So let's make that 525. So now these pictures are all lined up. And that looks that looks pretty close. Let's move it in one more. All right. Now I picked the bottom over here rather than the top side because now my design kind of makes a triangle. You could imagine a triangle being drawn here. You've got this guy looking down. Maybe he's looking down at the Science Center, the Science City. But this line kind of like holds in the eye. I've got a line here and a line here with kind of leading lines into the center. And then you've got the design that kind of flows up and around and back down. And this is kind of held in the bottom. These kind of two tie together because they're black and white. So we've got the a design, um, a layout pretty well established. Okay, that, that looks pretty good. I'm, I'm okay with that. Because now if this picture was facing the other way, it should be on this side of the design, right? It would look better on this side of the design. Now he's looking down into the design this way. Um, it shouldn't be on this side, but now he is facing left. And so he's going to be um, looking into the design this way. So it just depends on what what direction your pictures face when you go in and um, Uh, hold on, I got a couple of things to address here in the chat. Um, um, okay, and... Okay, so there's, a, and I'll go over this again. For this assignment, I want all the images taken to be have ta to have been taken between August, whatever our first day of August fifteenth, and the end of the, the end of the semester. So the pictures should be taken sometime now. Um, the pictures should be composed pretty. You know, think about the rule of thirds as you compose your photos. If you have photos that just happen to use the rule of thirds composition. That's great. Um, as you place your photos, like I've placed mine, the photos, each photo has a direction. Now, some photos, I, I have a photo here. Um, let me go add a layer just for fun. I have a photo like this photo right here that I took. Let's see, this one. This photo doesn't have a direction. It's a symmetrical composition. So they're sort of a little composition. I might put this on the top versus the bottom. I put it on the bottom. It's, it, it's going to go somewhere in the center of my layout. It wouldn't go on one side or the other because the the lines in the photo are kind of like left and right it's it's not a um, it's not got a lot of direction like these other photos so oops there we go I just want to get rid of the layer um, and let's see I think I had one more photo that had a direction let's just check Oh yeah, this one. So this this photo, it would be placed, I wouldn't place this photo on the lower left because there's this strong border on the upper right. I would play this, place this photo on the upper right because kind of then this arch is kind of like holding in the frame of the whole design. This photo wouldn't be going over here. It, it kind of works best on this side of the design. Now as you, as you, let's see if I can, Get rid of that layer. As you make your design, um, your photos, you kind of want to pick photos that will work well together. Um, so once you get your five, now the other thing is I, um, just for this class, I've added, um, you could add, and I don't know how big these are going to come in. I've done, here's my two elements, one principle example. And I can make the width, you make the width 400 so it kind of fits in and I could replace one of my pigs like this one uh, this one looks like it should go up here so if the, the, this I'd put up here but I um, and if I if this now here's an interesting one let's say I didn't have let's let's find this layer and make it disappear for a moment 
Um, let's say I was to add this image to my layout. Because this line and this line don't match up, I would probably not use 400 width. I would match the height of this. The height of that is 267, so I'm going to change this to 267. And then move it into position. So there's sort of my design. And I might, I might. I don't know. I'm not sure if that's the best place for, for it, but there's a sort of like a, now I could call this, I could call this design, um, because we're gonna put text in, I, I, I titled this like period six portfolio or something like that. But right now I'm going to go and make this reappear and this disappear. And trash that layer. All right, so now I've got my my basic design set up, and I, well, maybe I want to draw a box here. Uh-oh, my background moved. So one thing you can do is I want that layer on the bottom to be fixed. And so over here on these dots, I click on the dots, I click on locked. And now, no matter what I do, I can't click or drag or select that background because I just want it to be a background. I don't want it to be in place. I don't want to be, mess with it. All right, so now I've got my, my design, everything set up. I'll zoom back out. Um, and I want to put some text in. So I'm going to click on the text. And I can either add a text layer this way, where it says add a text layer right there. Or I can click on the text tool and just click on the background. And it says, do you want to add a new text layer? Yes. And so I'll put in European Travels. OK, so I've got my text. And notice I have my font. I can change the size and the settings and all the th parts of the font. But I don't want European travels to be there. I want it to be in a different spot. And this, this text box is too big. Now, when you do your text, that disappears. It's only there when you're moving the text around. So I'm going to shrink this box down. But I want it to be right justified because I want to stick it in here. And I want the box to kind of go along with the right justification for other purposes. All right, so now I've got my text here. But notice that my, my text, my font and size and alignment um, uh, dialogues are all gone. What I have to do is, while this is selected, click again, whoops, click um, back on the text tool, and then the text tools, the, then all the text uh, um, fun features return. All right, so size 80, 80 let's say, well, maybe, let's try 100. That, that's too big. Let's go back to 80. Um, oh, and we wanted to have it right aligned. So here's the alignment. So this is settings for the font alignment right. Okay, now I can set that up. Um, I'll make the box a little bit smaller again. So the text is good. Now this font I'm not really pleased with and it's not, not the best looking font. I'm going to use a different font. And you'll notice there's a whole bunch of fonts. You go on and on and on. There's numbers, numbers and fonts. I know what I want. Eh, that doesn't look good. I've got, I found a classy font. It's called Mountain. If I hit the first letter of the font on the keyboard, the list goes down to M at the bottom. So it's, it gets a lot closer to where I want to be. Mount, there it is, Mountain. I think that looks kind of cool. It's kind of got a retro, classy look to it. And lining the font up is different than lining up boxes because the font box does not line up the same way. Um, I just want to just double check and see what I'm saying is true. Top is 233. So I'm going to try this with top of 233. Yeah, see the the alignment numbers align with the top of the box not with the top of the font. So if I want to align this font, so the S lines up with the same spacing as the the picture frames, I'm going to have to do that manually. So I scroll in, and so here's the bottom. It looks like it needs to go up a little bit and over a little bit. No, oh, right about there. Now, if I really wanted to, I could draw a little box down here as, as a measuring tool. 
I had to see if I got this right. Um, but it looks like I'm pretty close. I got that lined up, got that lined up. So it all lines up. So my European travels text is fitting into my design pretty well. Okay, there. so now I've got this European travel title in my design. I want to have some body font. Body font is the paragraphs that explain stuff. So um, body font is going to have a different... Um, Okay, uh, looking at the chat. Um, body font's gonna have a little different design because you want it, it's going to be the font that explains stuff. It's gonna be a different font, but I'm gonna just put it in. I'm gonna click on my text tool. I'm going to, um, and all the questions in the chat will be answered by the end of this whole lecture. Um, I'm gonna add in my text layer, and now it's going to be, um, what is it? Okay, so there's my text, but it's now way too big. So I'm gonna change the font. I'm gonna change this to 30, 24. Let me make it 30. And I'm gonna change the, and I have another font I have in mind. So I'm gonna move this down here. That's not gonna fit. And I'm gonna change the font to Print clearly. That seems like a good idea for a font. It's kind of got the same sans serif as sans serif. Those kind of go together. Uh, but my words take up too much space, so I'm going to go and change the size. Now, the other thing is that they're centered. Now, I could put this over, the, over here. But, eh, I don't think that looks very good. So I'm going to go back to my text tool and make this right justified. Right aligned. And now I can go back in here and change the size. Okay, so now I can move this around till it's lined up down here at the bottom, kind of like it's lined up everywhere else. And I think I wanna make that a little bit there. So this this text kind of fix, and how you set the paragraphs up, when the, now this is called word wrapping. The word goes, the, the line of text goes to the end and then wraps around to the next line. And for this reason and for the reason that Vector does horrible job with, with photos, we're using Pixlr. Now, Pixlr has a lot of the same, same conventions about how to place stuff, so it's going to be pretty easy to use um, and comparable. So as I move this over, you can see now those are perfectly lined up. I'm not sure I like that. You can get having one word. So if you do your paragraph and there's one or two words, there's a whole bunch of lines and then one or two words, that really doesn't look very good. Um, that doesn't look good, that doesn't look good. So figuring out where to have the word wrap. Now you can also do the, the fully justified, which is, no, I don't have fully justified. Never mind, I lied. Okay, so let's move this over. I like that two line version. Because two reasons. I think now if I was to put if I was to move these photos apart and have like captions under each photo, I might this wouldn't work. But <clears throat> what the text is saying down here because the text overlaps two photos it gives the impression that this text is more is about at least two of these, if not all of these photos. 
So, but if the text was, was just centered around this one photo, if it was just over here, you might think, is this text about this photo or is it about all of them? But with the text um, and two lines like this, um, doesn't really match with the design, but if I go one a little bit further, I think this works the best because now we have sort of a shape that's pointing one one line goes down here of the if you look at all the pieces of the design all the elements there's sort of a triangle shape going on here all right so and you can also change the color of this font um, if I just click on the color window here I get this and you can and this has a color picker just like um, most other editing programs where if I click on one of these things it'll turn that that font into whatever color I'm hovering over so if there was like a gray color whatever I could just click on that and it would become that color the, the font but I think I've, I've found that the color white works best for this so now there's sort of my design <clears throat> I've got my design going on all right um, but it looks like I've got a lot of negative space going on over here. So I think I'm going to add a kind of a graphic element to kind of frame the text a little bit. So I'm going to click on my shape, or my, is it my shapes? Yeah, it's my shapes tool. I like the rectangle. And so I'm going to draw a rectangle out here. Oops, I made a mistake. I did this before. Um, I'm going to add a layer. Because that when I did it that way, it draw the, drew the shape on the lock layer at the bottom. And I want to... I don't want to do that. I want to have a, I want to have a shape I can manipulate. But now I'm going to draw my shape. And oops, it's on the top layer. But over here, there's layer 14, which is a shape. I'm going to move that down through the layers. And you can see as I go down, it's now at the bottom layer. But it, because the bottom layer is locked, it won't move beyond the bottom layer. It won't go under that layer. If I unlock this layer. I could move that small box below, but then you couldn't see it. So we'll leave that this way. We'll lock this layer again. Um, now I've got, well, that kind of looks okay. I kind of like that. Um, if I want to change the size, now it says fixed right here. Um, so it's going to change in proportion. So I could change it so it's centered. And that's, that's kind of a look. Um, if I click on free, I can change the height and width at the same time. So I could go here. That might work. So that's one. But I can also edit and click on free distort, which changes the anchor points. Oops, that's the background. I don't want that. I want to free distort this. So I click on oh, it's uh, free distort is here. So I click on free. Oh, I'm sorry, free transform. Nope. Free distort. Free distort um, turns the anchor points into little circles, which means now I can grab this and move it around the entire design. All right. Let's see. Uh, I think I want to. I'm going to change this around. I want to start a little bit lower. I think I want to start down here. No, I want to start. I think it was right here. Right around here. Okay. Now I'll go to my free distort. And let's see. I'll move this up here. I've kind of messed with this design already. All right, so I'm adding a little graphic to the background. Yes, this time. So now I have this little graphic in the background and that, that kind of helps my design because my photos are sort of making a big triangle this way and this frame in the background sort of makes a, a reverse triangle point in the other way. So it sort of balances this really strong triangle going one way and I've got my design going the other way. So there's my design. Now, the last part of this is saving it. 
So you're going to save both a JPEG and, in this case, a Pixlr format file. JPEG is just going to make a picture out of this, so it's going to turn all these separate layers into one layer that's only editable by, by uh, you know, erasing. You can't mess with the text again. Once the layers are fixed, like flattened or, or what they call merged to one layer or, or merged down, then it's just one JPEG and it's all pixels, and you can't really edit it anymore. You couldn't change the text. You couldn't re, you know, change the font. Um, so to do that, to get the first, the, the JPEG, I'm going to click on File, and then click on Save, and it's already on JPEG. It's sort of the standard format for this. The name's already in there because I gave it a name to start with. If you didn't, then you need to give it a name here. I want to change 90 to 100% to get the highest quality. And then um, the size is the size because it's a 1920 by 1080. We set that up already. So hi, JPEG, 100%, give it a name, height and width are already fixed. And then I click download and whatever folder I've been using, it will go into that folder. So now here's my file sam final sample period six. I, I click save and it saves into that folder where I got my pictures from. Um, so that's that part's done. Um, now, the next part is I want to save that that Pixlr file format. So we're going to click File and Save again. And instead of JPEG, we're going to click PXD. And PXD saves the saves all the elements. All these layers stay. Uh, it, and I, I don't know how much of the history stays, but the layers stay. And you can go and edit these again. I'm going to click Download. And then it saves, it gives you a PXD. See, instead of JPEG, it's got a PXD file format. And so I'm going to save that. So you'd have to upload that back into Pixlr to edit it again. Now, I've saved that. I've saved the other. I'm going to click Home to show you kind of like a, a, another feature is that this is now saved in your browser's history. So it says clear history. So it says tip, if you want to keep a document, then click the heart icon to pin it. History is only saved temporary in the browser cache. All documents will be deleted if you clear the cache. So the browser you know, the browser got some history. It's got saved in there. But if I delete the browser history, this would disappear. But if I click this little heart, it gets put into my saved files. And this is still active. So I click on it. It opens right away. It's still the active file I'm working on. I can go and move the you know, European travel. Oh, this might look cool up here. Let's try that. So now that might look a little better. I like that better. And I'm positioning it, sort of centering it on this picture. So the, the center of this is on this picture and giving about equal space left and right. And I should center the text in that box or shrink the box size or whatever because the position is based off this box. So let's shrink that box size down just before it, it does that. And I'll change the font. Uh, I'll change that to centered font because then, then the position of the box, the XY position of the box will make more sense to the program. So let's see where we can put that. And then, then I can also use the box a little better to align this. And this is a visual thing. So there we go, European travels. Now this, now I kind of like this design even better. Um, all right, so I've got my design and then I would want to save a, another JPEG and I could save a JPEG and claim, do this and do this and do this and say download. And it's going to say, now my program says it's going to add another one because there's one of that name already because in, in computer land, you cannot save something exactly the same name. But in this case, I'm going to click on the final sample that I did already and click Save. And it's going to say, oh, do you want to replace that? And I'm going to say yes. So now I've replaced the JPEG I saved already with this one. And if I wanted to save the PXD the same way, I would have to save a PXD and save it over the top of the file I already saved. Otherwise, I start collecting a whole bunch of files of different, different versions of the same file. So there is the final. Um, what's going to happen from this point forward is you're going to have time to work on your final. Um, oh, and like I already said, you could, you could put uh, 
uh, screenshots of your of your Excel files. You could put whatever in to your design. Um, there are going to be five images or files that you created over the course of this class. You know, during the time between August, the end of August, and today, or or the end of the semester. Um, are the photos are going to come from? Like you could use your rule of thirds photo and take four more photos. You could use your rule of thirds thirds photo and another photo that you take and then have pictures from your your um, phone's uh, history that you've taken before um, but those once again those pictures need to be JPEG they need to be good quality they should have some composition that goes with them so rule of thirds is the big one that that you should be doing like notice this this glass thing the cracked part right in the center is on the rule of third spot. This one is pretty close to the rule of third spot. The rule of third spot really over here. That's over here. Close enough. Um, rule of third spots right here on this photo. The rule of thirds is strong horizontal lines right here. But the strong horizontal line is not the rule of thirds. So here, the cross is on the rule of third spot. This, if the cross wasn't there, it wouldn't really be a rule of thirds shot without it. So um the assignment is going to be due on let's see the sixth period so thursday the the last final on thursday is 10 30 so i think it's noon is the the end of the class end of classes on on um thursday so at the end of the final on thursday i'm giving you lots of time to work on this because i want to see some quality work so don't just throw something together today and oh it's done and then turn that in that your your final should reflect some thought and design and quality because you have um, you have this class you have Friday the short class on Monday and then the hour and a half two hours I think it's two hours on um, Thursday so you have quite a bit of time to work to to work this into a nice design um, you have some time to take some photos um, you could, like mine says European travels, you could say flowers and take a bunch of pictures of flowers. Just remember when you take your photos, use the rule of thirds composition technique. Um, if you want to add um, your vector drawings, remember that you, you would have to download your vector drawings as JPEGs. Um, like I downloaded this drawing as a JPEG and, and I'm using it. So it's got, the quality is pretty good. I can use, I could use this in this design and let's see so it looks back there that's kind of funky looking now I couldn't make this too much bigger because it's gonna start to pixelate and you don't want to have pixelated work in your layout so I think that you know there's some things you could do now that I might change the, the color of the font if I'm gonna have something else behind it but you can add your other designs to other, you know, your other work to this, um, this assignment. Um, like I have my, like I did, uh, I took screenshots of my Excel GPA calculator. So you could have this in your, in your design and then say, well, here's, this is like a portfolio and do a portfolio type design, have your photo and have, have the, the, elements of art and principles design graphic and you know whatever you want to put in there things you created for this class or photos you took you know the, the rule of thirds photo and photos you've taken for this class um, that's the idea now I'm going to get rid of this because it does not fit with my design and there's my design I like my design so far um, <clears throat> and now I'm going to take any questions. If you have questions about this stuff I just showed you, which will, and I'm also going to stop the recording. So the recording stops here. I'm just taking questions. So there you go.